PhD who is a full stack developer for the platform that we're going to show you uh, and uh, tell you about the power that is have to analyze your own data and beyond. In India, we represented by four people. Uh, primarily, uh, I would like to introduce you Dr. Mohit Mazumdar. He's a director. Uh, he's a JNU, uh, PhD from JNU on machine learning. Myself, Pratim Chakravarti, and Apar. Apar is a research intern with us, and Shubhruji. Shubhruji is also a research intern working with us for quite some time now. So all our team are ably managed and very effectively managed by our CEO, Elia Brodsky, who is in the US. We have some collaborations by Vachu Upper Bird for the year 2017. Uh, uh, we have been trying to bring in a project-based education in the domain of bioinformatics and uh, trying to extend our knowledge that has been gained for a decade of research on the various aspects of bioinformatics and as a result we have went in, we have entered into collaborative uh, understanding with many of the universities across the world chiefly university of nebraska medical center tulane university lbrn loyola georgetown and in india we have recently entered into a collaboration with uh, amity university uh, bennett university and so on so our vision and mission between uh, of pine biotech uh, kind of uh, matched and uh, with pine with bioclues and therefore we have entered into a, a collaboration with them i mean i would really like to thank the uh, you know the very effective and very knowledgeable team that of bioclues who has taken sincere effort to make this collaboration effective and we would like to work with them uh, in, in the future to make our uh, efforts more sustainable and also much more productive and to provide the right kind of uh, services and collaborations, collaborative factors for the people who are to belong to BioCruise and beyond. So as a result of this collaboration, we'd like to bring in front of you uh, uh, a program uh, which we say as uh, biology as a data science. So this is the joint program between BioClues and Pine Biotech. Uh, the 19th century was all about describing the biological events that occurred around human visible to the naked eye. In the 20th century, humans attempted to look deeper in each of these biological events to understand the mechanisms at the cellular and the subcellular level. And finally, in the present era of 21st century, it belongs to the high throughput experiment. What are high throughput experiments? They are mostly automated and measure the functions at cellular and subcellular level. As a result, producing a huge amount of data giving birth to a concept which is called big data. Looking back in history, as to how we got here. Now, it all started with the discovery of double helix of DNA by Watson and Brick, Rosalind Franklin and Maurice Wilkins. The quest continued. And in 1990, an optimistic project was envisaged to sequence the human genome. The project required a whooping amount of 3.1 billion of US dollar and spanned for almost 13 years. The project also paved the way for discovery of new computational techniques and therefore Illumina uh, uh, made its entry and uh, Illumina machine made its entry and this provided the precision and lesser sequencing cost. Now in 2018, we have thousands of genome instead of a single genome. Therefore, again, giving birth to the concept of, uh, you know, uh, a lot of amount of data which needs to be understood, they need to be analyzed, they need to be curated, and they need to be, you know, uh, provided meaning to. So NGS also changed the perspective of how a clinician looked at a clinical phenomena. Now, what a clinician can see as a clinical data are actually governed by and characterized by the genomics, the proteomics, 
transcriptomics, epigenetics, and microbiome. Now, assays and experiments in the omics domain led to the accumulation of huge amount of data, which can be otherwise said as data explosion. According to a 2017 white paper of Stanford University of School of Medicine, by 2020, there will be 2314 exabytes of data, specifically in the healthcare domain. And as you can see, one exabyte equals to several million megabytes. And this staggering go growth is by almost 48%. Now, here comes the entry of us. A cumulative understanding on this data deluge led us to develop a consolidated set of tools which would address the need of data analysis in a multitude of domains. We would like to introduce to you our flagship product, which is known as server.t-bio.info, or you can also call it the T-Bio platform. The T-Bio platform is a large collection of algorithms, which in various domains, uh, like NGS, mass spectroscopy, and most importantly, machine learning, particularly data association and data mining. This platform gives a biologist the power of analyzing his or her own data effectively and seamlessly with a point and click mechanism, but at the same time, leave the floor open for programmatic intervention for further downstream analysis. And hence, this platform has the capability to cater a new entrant in the bioinformatics domain or an experienced user alike. Now, I would request uh, Mr. Shubhriti Borwa, who is a research intern with us, to uh, give you a tour of our server platform and its capabilities. Shubhriti, all yours. As Pratim mentioned, there are various sections available on the TBIO Info platform. The first section is the next generation sequencing. The platform has made high throughput data analysis easy through its point and click interface. Although we don't need to worry much about the coding going on in the background, many of the algorithms generate an R script which can be used for downstream analysis. The NGS section also covers the areas namely transcriptomics under which you can find pipelines for RNA-seq, transcriptome deconvolution, de novo transcriptome assembly, RNA editing, mutations, annotation, single cell transcriptome, and many more. Under the broad heading of genomics and epigenetics, you can find cheap sequencing, bisulfate DNA methylation, mutation variation, etc. Another area is DNA or RNA, under which you can find microbiota, 16S rRNA sequencing, and many other algorithms. Among the numerous algorithms available in a simple RNA-seq pipeline, many of them has been indigenously developed at Tauber Bioinformatics Center, namely for pre-processing, array to faster, PCR clean, GTF adjust, for data simulation, simulate, simulate R, for exon detection, BS exon, for the purpose of mapping, BSKLB GPU and its two variants, GPUI and GPUT, for segmentation, we have Purpose, BIN-S, Linear-BS, Merge-BS, and many other algorithms. Now, on my screen, you can see how a simple RNA pipeline interface looks like. Let's now dig deeper and see how an RNA pipeline works. So this is the front page of server.tbioinfo platform. Under the section of NGS data, you can find transcriptomics. And if you see under transcriptomics, the first option is an RNA-seq pipeline. The RNA-seq pipeline uses data of breast cancer cell line as its input, which are in fast Q format. Here, as you can see in the input files dropdown, 
The input files have already been uploaded securely in the server and the SVN link now needs to be uploaded in the pipeline. We just have to click on OK and you can see the start has been done. After we click on start, we can see there are various buttons present here which are highlighted with a yellow highlight. This shows that which are the algorithms which, can, which you can follow to process your RNA sequencing. This is an exclusive artificial intelligence guided platform which is available in KeyBio Info platform. Once the data is uploaded, we can now proceed with the next part which is pre-processing. For data pre-processing, algorithms like Trimomatic and PCR Clean can be used. Trimomatic is an algorithm which removes the adapter fragments from the cDNA for sequencing. As you can see, there's an educational pop-up which comes up when you click on the button known as Trimomatic. And also there's an associated publication which you can click to read and learn more about this algorithm. After you click on OK, you can see the PCR Clean has been highlighted. PCR Clean is used to remove the over duplicated PCR replicates from your input data. Also, as mentioned before, there's an educational pop up which can tell you more about how this algorithm works. After you click on OK, the next thing which you need to do is mapping your data against a reference genome. For that purpose, you can use HiSET2. It is an algorithm which maps your data sequences against a reference genome which you have to select when you run your pipeline, namely Homo sapiens, GH38, Arabidopsis thaliana, human mouse concatenated, and many more. Once you click on A, the next button which is highlighted is Cufflinks. Cufflix is an algorithm which is used for isoform construction. You need to click on the button named as Cufflinks and click on OK. After you click on Cufflinks, you have to click on Cuff, Cuff Merge. Cuff Merge is an algorithm which is used to merge all the isoforms together. After we have done this part, the next job which we need to do in the pipeline is mapping our input data against a transcriptome. For doing this, we use a very famous algorithm known as Bowtie 2G. There's an educational pop-up and an associated publication which you can read to get more insight on this algorithm. After mapping against transcriptome is done, we need to quantify our input data. For quantification, we use an algorithm known as RSEM expression table which uses EM algorithm and you can adjust the quantified data into three categories namely RPKM reads per kilobase million, FPKM fragments per kilobase million and TPM transcripts per million. After you have clicked OK, there's a section which is known as differential expression. Differential expression offers a various kinds of algorithms namely HR, GovDiff, DEC, and DEC2. For this particular pipeline, we are using DEC2 for analyzing the differentially expressed genes, as you can see by this graph, which is there in the pop-up. And once we have done this, we can see that only N has been highlighted. So that means that we have successfully created our pipeline now, and we just have to click on N and click OK. After we have clicked on end, we can see that our pipeline has been joined with a dotted arrow which shows the pathway of our pipeline. Once this pipeline completes its running, we will get the output files which we can download from here. As you can see, there's a long list of output files out of which if you follow the name, there's expression isoforms, FPKM, which gives the quantified isoforms. There's expression genes, which gives you the quantified genes in FPKM. Then there's DEC to all files, which gives you the differentially expressed genes. So you can click on the, any of these names of the output files, download them, and then take your analysis further. Moving on, the next area of analysis 
is data integration and modeling, which includes virology, data association and multiomics, and data mining, which comprises of machine learning algorithms, namely supervised analysis, unsupervised analysis, and many more. Now, I would like to give the stage to Apar Agarwal, who is a research intern at Pine Bio. Apar, the stage is all yours. Thank you, Shubhiji. Thank you, Pratim. Uh, thank you for the uh, brief description of the platform and the demo of the pipeline. So as you all can see that how easy is it to perform such a complex analysis of RNA-seq pipeline and uh, the differential gene analysis using the tbiinfo platform. But there is more that you can do with the help of the platform, such as virology experiments, data association using the multiomics integration, genome-wide association, and uh, as briefly described by Shubhajit, you can also perform data mining using multiple machine learning uh, algorithms, uh, briefly described as supervised and unsupervised analysis. So let's get a dive into that and give you a demo of uh, what this uh, supervised and unsupervised section looks like. So again, we'll go to the platform and here you can see we have divided the data mining section into supervised and unsupervised analysis. So the unsupervised and supervised analysis covers uh, the following tools. Uh, in the unsupervised section, you can find PCA, P clustering, H plus K means. Now you can see that there is PCA, PCAR library. Uh, and uh, so let's try to uh, run a pipeline that Shubhiji just ran, ran uh, with the RSEM table or the expression profile data. Uh, data. So we just click on upload files and select a file of RSEM expression. Let's use the 7,000 or the 15 genes. So we have now uploaded our data. Click continue, start, and uh, you'll get a pop-up again, which will describe what algorithm you are using and how it is working. And you can find more or on the educational background of it here. So uh, you can set the parameters of this plot, uh, such as the number of PCs that you want to uh, plot. Do you want to scale your data? Yes, we want to do that. Centralization, transposing your data. Click on yes and done. That's it. So once you are done, give, a, give your pipeline a good name, PCA demo, and just save it. Uh, the platform is very user friendly as you can find your other pipelines under my pipeline section. You can see the progress of your previous pipelines. You can delete your old pipelines or you can uh, run the uh, analysis again. You can download the PDF uh, of the outputs and even the, uh, uh, the backend summary of the uh, platform's pipeline that you ran so that you can publish them in your research. So I have already run the pipeline before this uh, webinar. So let's look into the results of that. Uh, the pipeline that ran comes with the R, R package that you can download. And these are the plots that you'll get once you run the RNA-seq analysis. So since we had set three plots, you can see this is one plot which clearly demarcates all the clusters. This is another plot and this is that. So these are the uh, plots that we just ran using the same data that Shubhajit uh, created in the RNA-seq analysis pipeline. But you can do more with this. You can download the script from the platform and change, uh, change the visualization as per your demands and make it more beautiful uh, using the R script from the platform. So all the data that you will get from the platform is readily available uh, to publish in your uh, research journals as it's very high quality and uh, high definition images and plots. So uh, the USB of our platform is how powerful it is to integrate the multi-omics data. You can integrate the genomic data, epigenetics data, transcriptomics data, proteomics data, and uh, all of this is available under one section called the multi-omics association. Uh, the cutting edge tools such as iClustering, SNF tools, uh, pclust, and biclust, all of these uh, tools are currently being used to uh, perform the multi-omics research and all of that can be just <coughs> in one click away. So uh, to learn all about this, uh, Mohit will be describing you more on that. So all yours, Mohit. 
before i jump into the uh, into my presentation i would just like to go back and summarize things for you here so what we have shown so far here in very uh, i think we did it at like really super speed but uh, one of the reasons is to make you all uh, understand that it's a point and click based system so point and click based system what does it uh, give us so we have different sort of data types we have uh, we are looking at uh, ngs data we are looking at mass spectroscopy mass spectroscopy data we are looking at structural biology data and then uh, we are integrating a lot of data so we have uh, specialized projects in virology where we have collaborated with uh, universities and developed uh, complicated pipelines which integrate different sort of omics data so in transcriptomics we showed you a demonstration of rna seq pipeline where the cell line is cancer breast cell uh, can, uh, breast cancer cell line data and then uh, after you know doing the uh, looking at the raw data you pre process the data then from pre processing you uh, obtain a uh, rsm table and then you look at the differential gene expression so after doing all that you what you're trying to find out is a uh, number of genes uh, that are differentially expressed in one condition than the other so we have we are looking for a cluster of genes that might be you know differentially expressed in breast cancer and uh, uh, versus a normal uh, cell so after that we looked into the pca what is pca pca is something which which does uh, which does dimensionality reduction so what is dimensionality reduction we are looking at a very big data so uh, as you see here we have uploaded just a small svl file but the svl file has a link to all the data uh, all the f uh, fq data which are uh, big in size so we are uploading a lot of big data here and then we are trying to see what is what meaning we can get out of that big data so to understand that we are doing diff, we are using different type of different sort of you know algorithms that can give us a uh, meaning out of that or maybe we can visualize that data which is also a challenge to you know uh, when you have data data of size of gbs and mbs it's really difficult to plot them in a excel sheet and understand the meaning out of it so we are trying to reduce the data so that we can get the meaningful data so what we did in pca is we we try to cluster them uh, into different groups and see whether you know we can classify them based on the uh, the based on their types their subtypes so we have uh, we have uh, we have these uh, different subtypes in breast cancer which we are trying to classify so this these sort of techniques are very powerful in understanding multiple applications in bioinformatics may that be may it, it it is helpful in uh, uh, patient stratification where we are trying to give uh, where we are trying to segregate patients into two different groups we are also looking at you know biomarkers we are also looking at personalized medicine so these are some of the real time application of uh, of using technology such as this one of the another factor that uh, one of the another thing as a bioinformatician or a, as a biologist uh, that gives me a leverage by using this platform is you know the ease of access so i do agree that sometimes people feel like uh, you know building their own pipelines and doing their own analysis for everything but it does help to have a have a you know platform like this where you can quickly input your data and look for a pattern whether it is there or not once you see that and once you can repeat these sort of experiments with <coughs> different different kind of conditions you will definitely have a better uh, scientific uh, better scientific output out of it because you're looking at patterns at 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 a very ease by point and click and you're using different type of data types and as a par right he said the one of the biggest usp is is the data mining aspect of things where we are looking at data mining and data association we are not only we are not where we are not only looking at you know single type of omics data but we are integrating different kind of omics uh, data so these uh, these sort of data where where we are talking about you know transcription of uh, uh, where we are looking at the transcription level where we are looking at the you know uh, mutation variants where we are looking at the uh, uh, epigenetic changes so overall uh, an integration of this give a holistic picture of what is going on and what is happening so that we can derive a solution strategy 
So the platform uh, enables us, all of us, to do that very easily. But as, as many of us, like many of us come from different background, we do need to understand these data types. <coughs> so how we can understand these data, data types, we have an educational platform that I'm going to talk about in the next section. So I hope you have a, a, a kind of a, a overview of what, what are the capabilities. Obviously, going into detail of one of each of these pipelines is very difficult. As you see, these are very complicated pipelines. One of each of the pipelines have multiple algorithms. So we do have courses for everyone to understand about this, about this, about our platform, about this analysis. And we start, we start from basic. So let's go down to the educational platform and talk about, and let me talk about the courses that we have. So to understand all of this and a part of, a, a part of, a part of the analysis that we have shown, uh, we have a course on introduction to bioinformatics. We have a course on genomics, a different type of mutation where we are talking about different type of uh, mutational uh, variants and we are looking at the genome and looking at the changes uh, from the reference genome and things like that. We have transcriptomics, we are looking at the difference in gene expression from one state to another. Then we are looking at the epigenetic changes. Then we also look into, uh, we, are, we have also pipelines and courses on, uh, on analysis of metagenomics data. We are looking at microbiome and then, then, then a technique to you know, uh, uh, get meaning out of it. So machine learning. So we have these courses which are readily available in our uh, platform and uh, that can be accessed using this website. So why don't we go and see uh, the platform itself uh, in a demonstration here. So we saw the, our server platform. Now uh, we will look into the educational platform and what it offers. So the educational t-bio.info platform has number of courses. So these courses like transcript, uh, like introduction to bioinformatics, I said, this is how it looks. So once you start taking this course, which is a free course, this is absolutely free for everyone. So once you, if you, if you can see the curriculum, uh, this is a curriculum, uh, this is a course uh, built to, for, to make everyone understand. As you see, there are like high number of ratings. The ratings are really good because the course is uh, built in a, in a simple, in a way that it makes everyone understand what is the importance of data-driven discovery, what is the importance of uh, you know research in healthcare, what is how things are changing in molecular diagnostic treat, treatment development using this high throughput data. So the the application of bioinformatics in agriculture, environmental sciences, defenses, and everything has been covered in introduction to bioinformatics course. It's a great course. I would recommend everyone of you to take this course. And another course that I would like to demonstrate here uh, today is transcriptomics one, the things that we covered, uh, the pipeline that we did, everything is described in a logical steps here one by one. We have interactive videos, we have forum where you can post your questions and where we, 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 we have a personalized you know, touch to things. We, we talk to uh, participants, we talk to our students and we give them a, a thorough knowledge of what is happening and uh, how we can uh, you can do the analysis on your own so it's more like uh, an enabling thing more like a collaboration rather than a service so we would uh, this is how it works in our educational platform so other than the uh, other than the courses we have specialization tracks like oncology immunology which are uh, many of them are coming up which we are working on and then we have specialized projects so let me go back to my presentation so yes, uh, you can check this URL. Go to this URL and check the uh, check our web, uh, check our educational website. So uh, we do have a lot of projects. So how do we conceptualize the projects? So what we actually do is uh, we we take uh, publications that has high impact, that has high impact on the society, that ha has uh, importance in uh, the data types that have been explained here. This, those data types have been used and shown that the the analysis has a, has a meaning out of it. So we take take those publications; those are important and have these these sort of analysis that we want to showcase, that we want people to learn. So we take the data out of that. We 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 look at the methods. We replicate it using our own server, and then we build a project out of it. 
process the, which these projects have been built and then you can build your own projects using uh, using the same methodology or using your same using your ideas so the projects or the data types we are talking about here we have different type of data uh, we have different type of projects so the projects encompasses from biotechnology uh, you know uh, modeling precision treatment for breast, breast cancer so uh, we are take, take we are talking about 63 cell lines here so these are uh, high throughput data that we have been extracting uh, that we have extracted from these publications so there is uh, projects on virology there is uh, projects on agriculture there is pro there are projects on um, cancer the different type of cancer immune response immunology biomarkers so we have these specialized set of projects for anyone and everyone to take so that they understand uh, the methodology and and they they understand how these projects have been conceptualized and they can be used for uh, our research so uh, the users can go and check check these projects in our education and you can design in the end of it when you are capable when you understand uh, the data types when you understand the process then you, when you understand the technology then you can design your own project as well so uh, as i as i showcased you the platform how the platform is actually helping us uh, help uh, how a platform is helping the user to you know um, uh, see his progress so what it gives as a user as a participant as a student what i am getting out of the educational platform so i am finishing a lot of courses on different type of multi omics uh, analysis out of which i i i am learning a lot and there is a hands on practice with every course with every course i am doing a lot of uh, hands on practice which is recommended in the course and i am using the tba info platform to understand the data types to understand the process to understand the algorithms and the uh, and the semantic way of things and then out of which i am getting a certificate so i'm earning a certificate an international certificate i'm i'm seeing my progress i'm looking at my uh, you, uh, the number of points that i'm scoring which is based on the usage of the platform usage of the pipelines so i'm i've been able to evaluate myself how well am i am i doing uh, so that's a that's a platform cap capability which gives uh, which it gives to every user so Suprajit, as you said, has joined us for uh, almost two months now and has finished and have learned so much in so much short of uh, short time. In in my entire career, I have not seen something like this. When this platform, which which this platform gives, is to you know easy, easily understand things and at a rapid pace, a rapid pace. So these are some of the USPs for the platform for the educational side. Similarly, and like with all these programs going on we have been getting like a lot of good reviews from uh, very reputed people all around, all around the globe who are taking our uh, different uh, who are taking different programs that we are you know carrying on so i'll go back to the programs next but we have been getting a lot of good reviews we are getting a lot of good feedbacks just which is also helping us improve in a way that people are also suggesting what it is lacking, what we can do more. So it's it's been a very thrilling experience. So the, the in talking about uh, some of the programs that are ongoing right now is a, this is an example of specialization track. So bioinformatics for precision oncology. So we are here. We have been talking about uh, precision oncology, specifically cancer. We are dealing with uh, liver cancer and uh, breast cancer data. So we are looking uh, through the uh, eyes of genomic variations, through transcriptomics analysis, through machine learning, and then a project to understand how bioinformatics is helping in precision oncology. This is a very important, or this is a very much practiced, uh, 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 which is a practiced uh, uh, methodology that has been going on in us and it's been uh, now been practiced everywhere so it's it's it holds a very very much importance in what we are learning out of this program so many of the people have out of this um, bioinformatics for precision oncology program similarly we have these specialization special track programs like in a year we 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 try to do uh, make people understand about the genomics data about the metagenomics data, about the transcriptomics data, and other data types. 
So this is another program which has, which is a three months program. Uh, this has been carried out by uh, 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 by Despina, who is in Israel, uh, who is in Greece, and she's uh, an expert in genomics. She's in our team. So we have a good set of people who are trying to uh, tell about the different data types out there and how to use the platform and how to understand this data and make a good project or a good proposal out of it. So uh, in India, in India, we have started this uh, uh, with MIT University Kolkata, uh, where we have started with a program called Introduction to Bioinformatics. This, this is uh, not a specialization track as, as, as I was showing before. This is more like an overview of things where we are discussing about transcriptomics, genomics, uh, metagenomics, machine learning, then a project. So it will have an application of everything, uh, an overview of everything, and then application of different domains where people will be able to do a team project with their faculty in MIT University, Kolkata. Uh, in, uh, similarly, we have collaborated with Sister Nivedita University uh, for data science of, uh, for biologists, so similar program where we are trying to tell people, tell the people from the university of, uh, from Sister Nivedita University and people who, who are, who can, who will be able to take this course online. All of these courses that we are offering, the best part is that you can take them online you can take them from anywhere. We, we do have workshops, on-site workshops that will be also telecasted online. So the whole, whole uh, course is available online so that it can be uh, availed by anyone who is sitting anywhere. Similarly, we have another collaboration with uh, uh, Pine Biotech and uh, IGE. This will, be a, uh, this will start somewhere in, in September. This is a program uh, that I would recommend people who have not joined our programs yet to come and join and understand what we are trying to tell here. Recently, we joined BioClues because we believe that it's a great organization that promotes project-based bioinformatics education and brings together researchers with a diverse background that are already active in the bioinformatics space. So we would like to continue and explore how we can work together and how we can develop uh, new programs and address important topics that are both important for the students, but also important for the faculty uh, to uh, leverage bioinformatics tools more effectively. Any participant who would like to unmute themselves and uh, give a brief description about their work or themselves and how any comments that they would have for this platform of ours. Hello, can you hear me? Ghazala here. Yeah, hi Ghazala. Okay. Uh, hello, sir. So it was nice uh, webinar. Like, um, so all the tools I saw and the pipeline. But uh, one question was there that in the same pipeline for the same uh, analysis step, uh, there are several tools there. Like we have different options for the same step, right? So just wanted to ask that which one to prefer? Like if uh, someone wants to like most most precise results out of their analysis. So which tool? Uh, will prefer. Uh, just want to ask because I'm curious because of this tool issue. Because in Galaxy, uh, I was uh, when I was new, so I was using this Galaxy platform. So there are some of the tools like Top Hat and the, this coupling tools are uh, they're mentioned as deprecated tools. So that's why this question is there on my mind. Now, as you saw, there are some preferred suggestions and they are going to be in the tutorials that we provide. They are more in-depth explanations about the process of selecting and combining those tools together and ultimately designing the pipeline that is uh, most fit to get the answer that you're looking for. Um, some of the tools, like you mentioned, are um, regularly updated, but they, um, yeah, you can show the, the pipeline there. Um, but you can see, if you scroll down, um, you can see, for example, some of the steps are going to be uh, faster for processing. Some of the steps. Yes. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, uh, one more question I have. Uh, can I uh, get uh, what 
any is there any visualization course like visualization of biological data or answers we are getting results we are getting through for them visualization for the data data like pc plot you were showing the, i was asking about the clusters uh, there so was looking for the this course yeah we are going to be uh, posting a series of uh, machine learning uh, biostatistics data visualization and coding um, so that you can uh, start from the heavy pipeline and ultimately get a biologically interpretable result, but also be able to add more layers of information uh, to your visualization. So that is pending, but it's coming soon. We believe that we will have it in September and we'll make sure to share that with you as well. Our training programs are designed to first introduce the conceptual understanding so that we understand what is PCA, how does that help us understand data. We also have different uh, review of uh, these tools like clustering and classification tools. All of that is already available in Transcriptomics 3. Um, and we have a whole course on uh, machine learning for biomedical data that you can already start looking at. Um, but more in-depth visualization tools and more uh, custom visualization tools, we believe that will be ready by September and we'll let everybody know that it's launched. Thank you everyone for attending. The, uh, yeah, these are the email addresses uh, that uh, you can reach out to. You can reach out to any of us and we'll be able to address uh, those questions that we discussed uh, related to our platform and courses.